88.9 FM, KRFC, Fort Collins, live at lunch. I'm your host today, Cindy Schneider, in the studio with my technical guru, Drew Jostad. And today we have the privilege of having singer-songwriter Justin Roth in the studio. We have a real treat today. Justin is getting ready to release a beautiful CD, and today he's going to be debuting a recording off of that. And the rest of the show will be live. To start out the show, Justin's going right into a song for us called Trembling Like a Train. Tonight falls in Rotterdam at the Golden Tulip Inn. I'm standing in the rain Wondering which of these wet tracks to take And now it's time to choose And I'm trembling like a train Cause I gave away my ticket Overnight to You may think I'm crazy, that's okay I swear this place is damned, I'm still standing here And I'm feeling a bit insane Listening to the rooster crow, I'm frozen to the core, and I'm trembling like a train. But the sun is always shining on the beach in San Tropez. Anyway, I'm burning like a fuse. Time ticking away. There's so much left to lose. Not trembling like. When it pulls in with the wheels Pull down on that whistle Let me hear it screaming through the trees I'm burning like a Left to lose And I'm trembling Like a train And I'm trembling Like a train And I'm trembling Like a train Beautiful. We are live in the studio with Justin Roth. Justin, thank you so much for coming in today. You are welcome. It's great to be back here with you. 
awesome. I am so excited about the new CD. I actually had one in my hot little hands a moment ago, and uh, later on in the show, we're going to play a track off of that. But let's talk a little bit about the CD. I understand you have a recording studio in your home here yep. in Colorado. Yep. I, uh, I recorded the whole, the whole record uh, in my one-bedroom studio, and uh, with my own, yeah, my own studio set up and played all the instruments and did everything. It didn't really involve anybody at any stage of the game until uh, we came to mixing. So it was a, kind of a, an experiment. I bought the studio stuff with the intention of demoing songs and kind of fleshing out some ideas. And I started to get to a point where I really liked the sounds I was getting and the demos I was creating. So I decided to just kind of cut out um, that extra step and uh, take a stab at it all myself. That's exciting. What other instruments besides guitar do you play on it? Well, what I wanted to do in, in past records, uh, I've always hired you know, studio musicians who come in to, to play what their specialty is. And uh, there's something to that that definitely adds a certain a great thing to, to a recording where you have these other great players. And um, But in the past, I felt that sometimes that you also get, for each layer you add um, of somebody who's really proficient on this other instrument, it takes it one step further away from what the original is in you know, I only play uh, solo when I play live, so I didn't want to veer too far from that, but I still wanted to flesh things out and add textures without making it sound like there's a band. Because I've had records where I like, I like this song, I love the electric guitar part, which is somebody else. And you love it for that, it becomes a, it's, its own thing, but I wanted to keep this one a little more uh, restricted and give myself limitations to say, well, if I want to, you know, if I really wanted a really great, uh, drum part I'd hire a really great drummer but I don't want I wanted to put down parts that didn't draw too much attention to themselves so um, I was able to to build things uh, you know playing uh, starting with I would always start with guitar and vocal and add like a kick drum which was a big cardboard box awesome which actually <laughs> sounds really great when you mic it yeah and uh, so I just built it up like where do I want a pulse as opposed to where would a drummer go boom you know mm -hmm. do all these different parts so I added things in, in small doses um, to make the overall thing um, have all these textures and, and a more full sound, but without it sounding like there's an ensemble. Have you ever looped? Um, I've experimented with it, but, um, but I, not, it's never really become a part of my show or anything. But I, I have a loop pedal, and <laughs> I've, had, I've made some funny recordings at home, you know, messing around with it, but it hasn't become part of my thing. Well, um, the artwork on the CD is, is just brilliant. Talk to us about that. Well, um, I, you know, being here in Fort Collins, you walk around town and um, I couldn't help but notice all these posters that were really eye-popping and really, um, I saw them all over town and uh, looked up who was doing them. And um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right, but Darren Meharan um, from Summit Studios. So he's done a lot of different band posters. He's done a lot of the biking, like don't, you know, the biking uh, accident and biking on the sidewalk posters and <clears throat> just fantastic work. And uh, so I sought him out and we came up with the concept and, and, uh, and uh, ended up defining the, the look of the entire album. And so it was a fun, it was a fun process to, to go through to see what he can do with, with images. Yeah, he does great work and also is just so supportive of the artists in, in the area and probably outside the area too, but an inspiration, truly an inspiration for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, talk to us about the next song. Well, um, I think what I'll do, just for the sake of not retuning right now, I'll, um, I, I've spent, over the years, spent a lot of time in my car driving around the country and and uh, I discovered a, a little mini guitar that I found in a, in a shop in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, where I'm originally from, that um, fits really nicely in my lap while driving. <laughs> I didn't say that on air. There's, but uh, especially, um, and, and really only in Nebraska, where you have a straight shot and you can lower your steering wheel low enough to set the cruise control and drive no straight. No ditches if you go yeah. off the road. <laughs> so I've reclaimed a lot of driving hours to guitar practice time, and um, I wrote this song while driving um, primarily across Nebraska. It's called Spaghetti Junction.
If you just tuned in, we are live in the studio with Justin Roth. You can find out more about Justin on the World Wide Web at Justin Roth, R-O-T-H dot com, Justin Roth dot com. Justin, did you put a nanny nanny boo boo in there? You did. I did. <laughs> nanny, I, nanny, being nanny, the, in the whole driver's seat uh, with that song, um, there's uh, to me a lot of elements of uh, being stuck in traffic and people who cut you off and the, the looks you get sometimes or the looks you give people and they're cutting you off or maybe you're cutting them off. Yeah, that would be a fun so. music video, though, to, to produce, wouldn't it? <laughs> you, well, you, you know, without you know, trying to keep the grumpy faces of people, you know, <laughs> with road rage, it's trying to avoid that part and keep the playful nature of just like, oh, you're going to get to where you need, need to be when you, you'll get there eventually, so. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I saw you, gosh, maybe it was last spring, but it might have been the fall before at, at Avogadro's, but I just haven't seen you in so long. I want to hear about the last year and the touring and the artists that you've worked with and mm-hmm. and uh, stuff like that. Talk to us about this last year, what it's been like. Well, I've been spending the better part of the last two years um, out here um, between Fort Collins and Loveland, um, uh, primarily, I guess, bas- basing out of here. I still, like I said, I'm originally from Minnesota and still have a place there, but I spend most of my time here, and this is where I, I brought my studio and so in the last two years, I've, I really cut back on my, my regular touring. I was out doing about 130 shows a year for, um, for about eight years. And um, so I, I pulled it back so that uh, I could focus, uh, get back focused on writing and preparing for this record. And uh, I really started to uh, get used to being home and being able to be creative every day instead of just being on the phone and on the email, booking shows and traveling, which I still absolutely love, but it was it was kind of a needed respite to to tour full time. Um, there's so much, you know, aside from with the time that you're actually traveling, all the preparation and booking and stuff and promoting it takes up so much time. It was I found it impossible to write, and um, so it's a lot of detail too. It is, and it's and you know <laughs> I think for better. Well, I guess it's been for better, but. Um, Many artists that I know are like super creative, but completely disorganized. So they're not as effective at the booking. So they, but they're writing all these great songs, but they have trouble putting together a tour. And I'm more detail oriented, so I was really good at putting together a tour. And so uh, I was able to c- keep my calendar full and keep traveling and keep promoting uh, my last record. But uh, I found that I just was not able to write and do that the right and left brain thing at the same time Mm -hmm. to that degree. So I I pulled back and uh, spent a lot more time, you know, in the studio and uh, ended up finishing all these songs for the, for the record. So it's really kind of been a a balancing out period for me for the last couple of years. And uh, it's definitely been a nice place to be here in Colorado to do that. Well, you you look fabulous. You've got great energy. I can well, <laughs> you always do, but but uh, it's it's de- it's obviously working for you. And when you were talking about you know everything a musician needs to do, it reminded me of Celeste Krenz and how she started High Horse Records, which mm-hmm. kind of pools resources together of of different artists and and i think that's brilliant in this indie world that we're in yeah i mean because it's the old format is 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 dying in terms of like you need a record deal or whatever it's like you don't or you know and and to me the inspiration for recording the album myself too is uh i mean there's i mean there's great studios and there's there's definitely a need for that but i i I was kind of finding myself drawn starting to be drawn to certain artists that are um we're not necessarily the recordings weren't lo-fi, but it was like everything wasn't pristine, but it but the the song and the energy of the song was captured, and you know, um, and speaking of like people like Boney Vare and stuff like that, recorded in a cabin, you know, where it's everything's not pristine, but the vibe is there and uh, it sounds good, but it's it doesn't sound like a million dollar record. And I was like, I don't making a million dollar record does not make my songs better. It's I mean, it can definitely enhance. What you're hearing, I guess, you know, but I was really drawn to these artists that were kind of re- making more at home recordings, but still pulling it off in a way where the song really comes through. So um, I guess my point being is that that I want I wanted to scale back on um, one on relying on 
hiring other people for certain things. But at the same time, as we're talking about pooling resources, it's like knowing when to, to cut that cord and say, you know what, I don't need to do everything. But yet, I've kind of <laughs> taken a step back in that sense of, of trying to do even more, but in, on the creative side of things, which was really good for me to get back in touch with that. So now when it comes to the business stuff, to pool resources with other artists, to find other ways to promote your music and book more shows and getting out and sharing bills and stuff, that's what I want to get back into now, now that I'm getting ready to tour. Well, I love love hearing all of this. Would now be a good time to cue up the song from the CD? Um, sure, we could do that. And just to give a little, like as we were talking before about um, the things that I added, this is probably the song that has, um, well, in in not necessarily the most things added, but the the most the this, I used the studio kind of as an instrument where I could I had the freedom to to layer things. And uh, I had never, on previous records, I'd never sung harmonies with myself. I'd always bring in a friend whose voice I loved and to do their thing and then feature them. And this one, I, I did all the harmonies, and, uh, but wanted it, you know, without it. Well, I should probably didn't say, say much more than that. But this is the one that's got maybe the, the most departure of what you would hear live, but, but still trying to stay true to the, the energy and the vibe of just the song itself. You're listening to Justin Roth. This winter so cold This long night is getting old I'm hanging on down to the wire Singing for the dawn with the midnight choir Though days grow shorter, seem longer still More dark makes way for more bitter chill But I keep on trying to stay warm I got a feeling it won't be long
perfect song for this cold winter day. That is called This Winter, Justin Roth. And that was, ladies and gentlemen, a debut from the CD yet to be released, a KRFC and it's, debut. And it's, it's the first broadcast of any song from the record anywhere. So, because I haven't sent oh. it to radio stations yet. So, thank you so much you for sharing that with us and, and our, our KRFC listeners. And yeah. It's very special, and, and uh, I was so glad that you could come in today. When I gave you a call last week and just happened to have this date open, I was like, oh, maybe Justin can come in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great to be back, and I'm, I was flattered that you called. Well, you're a, definitely a KRFC favorite. Uh, Dennis Bigelow and I were, were talking about you. I mean, your ears were probably ringing or burning or whatever happens when that happens. But he was saying, you know, as, as many singer-songwriters as we have hosted over the years, and keeping in mind that we do the show an average of 22 times a month, mm-hmm. and Dennis for a number of years being our, our live at lunch coordinator and, and, and producer and keeping the show going. He's hosted a lot of shows and teched a lot of shows and performed on a lot of shows. But uh, he said, you know, I remember Justin and he's just incredible. And, and it, it, you know, he, that you, come, you came to the top of the singer songwriters that that uh, you know he remembered just because you made such an impression the first time that he saw you. Oh wow! Yeah, and that's a lot, you know, because Dennis is also uh, well. Right now, he's our interim general manager, but for a number of years was our uh, uh, music director, mm-hmm. listening to CD after CD after CD to uh, you know share with genre captains or share you know with mm-hmm. with the stations. So. You should feel good about it. Oh, that. I do. I think well, that's, I'll have to thank him in person yeah. afterwards. Well, thank you. I mm-hmm. mean, you're definitely a, a gift to us. So mm. thank you. Yeah. Right. So what's the most recent song that you've written? Are you working? Are you noodling on something right now? Well, um, the you know, just finishing this record, and like I said, having not even officially released it yet, I've already started recording my next record. <laughs> So, uh, which is going to be an all solo instrumental guitar record, which I've wanted to do for years, um, and people have been asking me to do it for a long time. And before, as I'm starting to get ready to promote this record, and before I really start touring on it, I kind of have this window of time where I can have, you know, be in the studio every day again, still kind of do do however many hours of promotional work, and then get back in the studio. And and since I'm kind of uh, you know, the the wheels are greased and I'm ready to just kind of turn everything on and be able to start recording. Because um, I, I really, I bought, for this record, I bought the equipment for the studio and learned how to use it for about six months before I decided to make the record. So the learning curve was huge. And now I'm starting at a, you know, a, having that record behind me to jump in, continue to learn, but... Um, and also be able to go ahead with where it's just solo guitar, so it's a, a little simpler production. And and um, so I've been balancing working on those new songs, um, and but those aren't necessarily ready for me to play right now. Sure, no, but, no uh, pressure. But so that's <laughs> that's kind of what I have been working on. The last song that I finished, uh, I was kind of getting this guitar ready. Of the last song that I finished uh, on for the Now You Know CD which we just played from, um, I could play that song, which is, I, I, for the first time ever, I had uh, did some co-writing for this record. There's uh, four, four songs that were written with uh, other friends, and, um, and this is one of them that I, that I wrote with L.J. Booth. Oh, sure. From, he's from Wisconsin, and we actually yeah. wrote two songs on this record together, and uh, he's been one of my heroes for a long time. I used to cover one of his songs when I was in college, and then I met him years later, opening for him. And uh, oh, I love it. So here we are now with a couple songs together. So, so this is uh, called "Out of the Blue." When it swept down. From that darkening sky You could feel the change in weather Where it slipped 
into the August corn. The tassels roll together, crescing across the surface in a steady westward slide. And quickly as it came, it passed out the other side away. Moved through out of the blue, a wave. They were driving into town, an appointment with the lawyer, dreading the ordeal. As they passed that field of corn, it hit them broadside, and he leaned into the wheel. She said, how we are sinking, can you say it's no big deal? He says, hon, I'm only trying to keep an even keep. the blue It's been a week since that storm rolled through But this morning is barely a breeze As the shadow of a raven rolls right over the orchard tree As it passes overhead, it occurs to me Picking plums is a lot like betting horses You must wait till their time is right These are very subtle forces Last week this fruit held fast Was that storm Tore across land today in stillness. The sweet trifecta just falls into my head. Wave move through out of the blue. We are live in the studio with Justin Roth. Justin, what are you listening to these days? I, I know you're you're working a lot on your own music, but is yeah. there any new music you can I've, turn I've us on to? I've kind of been buried, buried. I mean, in the studio, you, it's 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 kind of um, ridiculous how you I mean, as you're working on fine tuning things, uh, the songs or the recording. It's like you listen to yourself an awful lot. Yeah. Well, but, you uh, have to. Yeah. yeah. But, um, I mean, I really, the, for the record, the making of the record, some things that really inspired me about, um, some different people's recordings. Um, when I was out here, I discovered, for me, discovered Gregory Allen Isikoff. Oh, amazing. It was fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't, I don't own an iPod and, um, which maybe as a musician is, is a, you know, a, a big, faux pas or something you know like i'm way behind the times but um my girlfriend has one and she'd have it on shuffle and i kept on finding myself every time you know that i'd go to check it, like who is this and nine times out of ten it was gregory's record that's nice. that gambler record and uh, i just fell in love with it and then I knew that he was in boulder and um so i just loved the songs and loved the presentation and the production and everything which um which gave me some ideas for my record and 
um, people like that, and Boney Bear, um, and uh, Alexi Murdoch, which for me, these were start, start um, I, I've kind of been in the folk world for a long time. Um, David Wilcox, John Gorka, um, Michael Hedges, Martin Sexton, people like that, and those are really kind of the people like they were. They were the tastemakers for me. They were. They were the, the people that I gleaned things from when I was first learning to write and uh, really kind of finding my sound. And then uh, leading up to this last record, I was starting to get exposed to maybe I don't know if you'd call them indie artists or out, acoustic, but a little bit outside of the the folk um, norm and uh, really started to, I got a sweet ear for some of those things. And so now, for me, these days, I feel like I'm trying to blend the two to stay true to like the, the, sto- the songs with the stories and, and, and things, but also songs that are really mood-based as well, mm-hmm. to be able to create a mood. Um, I like to think of it as kind of more painting a picture than telling a story, where I may not connect all the dots, but you, know, you can look at a painting on the wall and depending on who's looking at it, they could have a different opinion of what they think the motivation was or what the story behind it is. Um, I didn't want to make, try to make things so clean cut uh, on some of these songs. And so to kind of have a balance of a painting and other ones that are a little more story based. Well, I cannot wait to hear the whole CD. I'm just so excited. It's awesome that you're here, and it's awesome that we are getting to hear this, um, and our listeners are getting to hear this for for this, a lot of this for the first time. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, like I said, this is this is my first interview since since uh, finishing the the album. So it's good to finally start talking about it and yeah. being able to share the story behind it. It was just really uh, an exciting uh, process for me, and I, I think. Uh, you know, like, I guess, you know, the creation of any art, it's, it's so mysterious and you, and you don't know uh, how it's, when it gets out there, um, where it's going to fit, um, especially when you do it completely by yourself and you have no other filter um, of another person in there kind of saying, oh, I like that or I don't like that. But uh, I, for me, this, this process was all about kind of re- ga- regaining uh, my sense of intuition about my own music instead of going, oh, well, this is a great session player, this is a great engineer or producer, they'll be able to figure out what's best for my song. And sometimes sometimes they're right, and sometimes it brings it to a place that you couldn't have got to on your own. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. But I, I wanted to figure out, like, where could I get it to on my own? And, uh, and then and put it out there and, and see what happens with it. So it's Brilliant. been a fun process, and a, it's the most proud I've ever been of any record <laughs> because I... I guess I have complete responsibility, or I, I, I can't share the responsibility or or the blame. It's like it's all uh, to, to me, depending on uh, what people, how they respond to it. So I'm really looking forward to getting out there and seeing, uh, sharing it with people. I think there's a lot of power in tapping into you know your own intuition and following you know that higher sense of what needs to happen. And I think a lot of people are finding that they're having to do that because looking externally right now, especially, you know, many places in the world, including in America, isn't working the same way that it used to. And we Mm -hmm. have to go inward. So it's interesting. Well, yeah, all art is so subjective, too. And it's like as as artists, um, I mean, I'd like to I'd like to meet an artist who isn't self-conscious or self-deprecating about what they create as they're even when you're inspired, you're like, this is working. But you're like, is it working? Like, <laughs> is anybody going to like it? And, and it's trying, and you try to stay in that it's working mindset as you're creating. Cause as soon as the editor or the, you know, the critique of, you know, the outside critique of what you think, how you think it's going to be received, that can just like pull the rug out from underneath you in the creative process. So it's, um, I think we're in, most artists are inherently a little, um, yeah, I don't know, self-conscious about as they're creating, but uh, um, getting a sense of intuition about your own music or your own art, whatever it may be, um, and learning from what's right and wrong, you know, or what works and what doesn't work. Um, and then also judging, too, depending, depending upon the audience. You're like, well, that definitely didn't work. That doesn't mean universally it's not going to work somewhere else. So it's like taking all the, both critique and praise with a grain of salt because it depends on who's looking at it or listening to of what's what's really the right way to to create or 
the right way to present a song. And this was my way of figuring out, like, well, how would I do it if I wasn't saying, oh, well, they know better than I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go with that, their, their idea, their input. So it was learning curve technically on the <laughs> recording, learning curve on trusting myself, um, and learning curve to try things in the studio that I would never do if I was paying somebody I respected to sit behind the soundboard as I try squeaking out different parts until I find what I like. You know, it's like when you have somebody else in the studio with you, you're like, well, I want them to respect me, so I'm only going to do what's safe and what I know I can accomplish mm -hmm. instead of like really going on a limb and failing, failing, failing until you really find what's working. And you're like, oh, that's the part. And I never would have done that if somebody else was sitting in the room with me. You're an inspiration. It's wonderful, wonderful to hear. Yeah. I feel like I'll, I fail a lot, but based on how many times I fail that... Um, I'm going to ha have to be just tremendously successful at some point. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, uh, there's a, well, the, uh, you're playing the odds, you know, like you just keep, and that's the thing about songwriting too, is that you, know, you, you just, you keep creating. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, that's, I, this is what I'm saying is, is like, I have to always tell myself this. You can get hung up on one thing that you're working on and you work on it for months or whatever. And you're like, Am I better because I figured out a couple small little changes in the song, or would I be better if I wrote ten more songs? You know, and it's like trying to keep that those creative juices going to uh, just keep creating. And yeah, the more you have out there, the more you create, the stronger you get as an artist, whatever your medium is. And and uh, yeah, it's a mystery though. Well, talk to us about creating the next song. How did it come about? Well, that's actually a good transition. Um, this is a, I was going to play the title track to the record. And this song was written as a complete experiment. It was um, my, uh, for people, well, from what you've heard today or if people heard my stuff before, um, I really lean on the guitar a lot because the guitar to me is a second voice, not just an accompaniment. And... Um, so, but this time I, I, so I tend to, to try different things in, in different tunings and doing a lot of percussive techniques and adding in bass lines or melodies. And, and I wanted to, I've always had friends tell me, you know, dare me or make a bet, say like, you know, I dare you to write a song in standard tuning because I never play in standard tuning. And because uh, it would just take away my crutch of the sounds that I'm able to get out of these other tunings. And so um, I, Twofold. I went into standard tuning. Well, not completely. I left one string slightly out, but for the most part, all my chord, chords and stuff are standard tuning in this song. And I also said I wanted to simplify the guitar and resist any temptation to add any little things in between the vocal lines that I typically would do. And um, and I sat down, not knowing what I was going to write about. Found a, a couple chords that worked together, and uh, just started to do stream of consciousness lyrics and recorded it as I went, and uh, in the end of five minutes, probably 80% of what was there ended up in the final song, where from there I was discovered what the song was about as it was happening, and uh, without a preconceived notion before I started. So it was a, a way to kind of try to see, see if I can on demand tap in with the muse. Wow, that's awesome, um, that's and magic. And let, let her take me where she wanted to, and, without, and just trust that I didn't have to know where I was going when I started, and uh, it ended up being uh, the title track. So it's called Now You Know. Clouds do 
you just give up the rain but this won't fall from the sky yeah. oh the tears from my eyes won't help at all Can you find it in your heart and be true? That's the hardest part, like the fading star peeking right through this dark. Come on home, keep me warm, even though you are sun. live in the studio with Justin Roth. That was the title track from his yet-to-be-released CD that we have the privilege of hearing some songs from today. That song was called Now You Know. I love it. That's a close second to my favorite Justin Roth song, which is Shine. Uh, Shine is just one of the most brilliant songs ever. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, and I love the story behind shine it's too. born right here in colorado yeah at the rocky mountain folks festival which is uh, again going back to talking about like music that's inspired me it's uh um it's not always the people that you find at the record store it's uh it's right in your backyard here down in lyons the rocky mountain folks festival song school which is a four-day workshop before the festival starts and it's uh people of all levels that are coming there to learn more about how to be a better songwriter and uh, I've drawn more inspiration from that place, um, sitting on Planet Bluegrass down there, um, than from anywhere else. Um, just watching people have breakthroughs and discover things about their own music and about their own um, their voice and the way they can perform. And um, it's really a magical, magical place where people are just able to discover all sorts of things. And in four days, you can make leaps and bounds. And I've been going there this coming up year um, will be my fifteenth year good for straight. you That's and i've been awesome. teaching for about the last eight maybe even nine years teaching uh, guitar workshops down there 
That's awesome. Do they open that up? I mean, uh, um, one year Kate Graves suggested that I go, and of course I'm not a songwriter, but I thought, wow, you know, for the for the creative mind uh, or someone who might aspire to to write, it could possibly be a a good thing to to watch. Well, it's uh, I mean, it's it's uh, it's limited to a certain amount of people that can sign up to be there, and. Um, is it only folk artists? Or no, no. I mean, it's it's primarily people who are playing acoustic guitar or okay. keyboard. Um, acoustic guitar more often than not because it's more portable mm-hmm. to be there camping with it and everything, and you don't have a piano, but you can have a keyboard. So primarily, it's that. Sometimes it's just lyricists um, that don't have an instrument, and they meet people to help them put you know music to their to their words. Um, but it's, I wouldn't say it's just folk. It's uh, there's there's people. I mean, it's it's hard to take it out when um, envision outside of folk when it's somebody singing an acoustic guitar. It's like the default is mm-hmm. assuming folk, but there's people who are, you can tell, are definitely more R and B influenced. Or um, there's not like people writing, you know, heavy metal or rock songs per se. But I mean, it's so it's not limited in style wise. It's, but it's about becoming a, a better songwriter, and because it's on acoustic guitar, it kind of tends to have more of that folk feel but there's that can be acoustic pop it can be mm-hmm. acoustic r&b it's 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 wide open there's no rules on that so as far as coming to watch it it's really i mean because it's it's limited with the amount of people that are able to sign up and it's it's already sold out it's like it it, it sells out within a, a, f- a few weeks i think of it being announced it's just gotten more and more popular um so it's it's i don't feel safe in saying that um People can just come and watch because I know that they've got limits of people that can sure. be there, and people are paying to be there. And of stuff. course, but but it's something to definitely check out. I'd say if you go to bluegrass dot com, um, you know, and there's a link for Song School to learn more about it, to be in the know the next time it comes around to be able to sign up. Do you teach outside of Song School? The I, I do some year? lessons when people contact me for them. Um, I don't I don't advertise for it. Um, but if there's, it's usually if somebody comes and says, you know, like your style of guitar playing, I want to learn some of those things mm-hmm. and approach it that way. I haven't taken somebody from the, necessarily from the ground up who like just learning to play guitar. Um, cause I, I was never really taught a method. Um, I was pretty much self-taught. And so when people want to learn the fundamentals of guitar playing, I'm kind of going like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of take it for granted on some of the things that I'm doing and, and realize, like, okay, how would I break this down to, like, learn the basics? And mm-hmm. so. If you just tuned in, you are listening to Justin Roth live on KRFC 88.9 FM live at lunch. You can find out all about the great artists coming into live at lunch if you go to the KRFC website, which is krfcfm.org. Click on programming. There you will find live at lunch with a link to the calendar And uh, that has all of the great artists coming in to the studio. We do this show an average of 22 times a month and uh, have a wonderful team of volunteers who are very diverse and make this happen. We actually, this month is my eight-year anniversary. All right. Eight years, yeah. Went fast. Well, we just have about seven minutes left in the show. Um, what what are you going to close the show with? Well, I can't talk about song school and have you tell me it's your favorite song and not play it. Uh, I was so. hoping. I didn't want to <laughs> ask, but thank you. Just got to get this guitar ready here. Of course. Yeah. And you can find Justin on the World Wide Web at justinroth, R-O-T-H dot com. Beautiful website, too, by the way. Oh, thank you. It looks a lot better with Darren's photos on there now. <laughs> um, I should mention too. I, I, I mean, I'm, uh, it's the website's got um, uh, tour dates and everything, and and around here I don't have anything in Fort Collins uh, coming up soon. But this uh, Friday, I'm doing a show um, down in Denver along with uh, Fort Collins artist uh, Shell um, and other folks. I think they're mostly from Denver, but Megan Burt, um, Rob Drabkin, I'm just seeing people on the walls here yep. on the posters here. All of them there's, are fabulous. I think there's about eight of us, 
um, I think, that are playing. And it's a, a benefit anniversary show for Strings and Wood, um, Strings and Wood's concerts, which is a, uh, and not, not only do they present artists, um, local artists, but they also uh, will help doing some booking and some promotion. So they kind of an all around uh, promote local music um, organization out of Denver. And so we're doing a, a, a benefit for them and uh, at the Oriental Theater. And uh, there's information on the website for that. And uh, since I've been in the studio so much lately, it's just kind of fun to get out sometimes just to play without it having to be like a, an official show. And, um, you know, starting to just look just to, to get out and, and play some of these songs for more people, as, uh, even open mics. It's a fun way to not only meet other local songwriters, but, you know, a place to... to uh, play some of your songs. So thinking of heading, gra- gathering a group of songwriters to head down to Longmont on Thursday to the Dickens Opera House. Oh, fun. And check it out. So I don't know. Yeah. So if there's other songwriters, and I think it's a fairly new open mic, and we're just going to go cool. play some songs and have some fun. Well, I want to thank Drew Jostad for being our sound guru today. As well, I want to thank Boston Associates for providing us with these lovely water bottles with a KRFC logo on it and uh, keeping our artists happy and hydrated. And also Alley Cat Coffee for comping our artists tea and coffee the day of their show. All right. Thank you so much for being here, Justin. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. And thanks for what you do here at the station. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. All right. So this is Shine. An August night, a rocky mountain sky. I stay up late to watch the stars rise. Around 3 a.m., seven sisters peek their eyes At earthly bodies huddled around the fire They look in wonder down on the land Stars are born and rise under them It doesn't matter if you're an ember or a flame Or a cinder rising towards the sky The light we give is not ours to take But just to let it Star shine bright enough to be seen from afar. Hydrogen, carbon, and flame are all a part of every star and every fire in our hearts. And into the skies, sending light. Some glow, others beacons in the night Like voices singing a song For the whole world to hear our constellation It doesn't matter if you're an ember or a flame Or a cinder rising toward The light we give is not ours to 
Stay up late and watch the stars 